the world is swept away. We look outside and that's what we see. We look inside and we see that our minds, as the Buddha said, are very quick to change direction, even faster than anything in the world. So are we, are we going to find anything sure and stable and reliable in our lives? Well, it is possible to train the mind. That mind that the Buddha re compares to a fish thrown up on the land that flips and flaps about, it can be turned into a mind that's like a stone column. It's a common image for the Arahant's mind. A stone column, sixteen spans tall, eight spans buried in the ground, so that no matter which direction the wind blows from, the column doesn't shiver or shake. to get training the mind in that direction. A lot of images in the canon of making the mind like Earth. There's one comparison where the Buddha says you live in the world and people can say all kinds of things, things that would ordinarily get you upset. They can be critical of you in ways that are helpful or not very helpful, kind or ill-meaning, true or false. You have to accept that as part of the world. This is human speech. So you make up your mind that your goodwill is going to be as solid and as large as the earth. A man can come along with a hoe and a shovel and a basket and try to make the earth be without earth, spitting here and urinating there, saying, be without earth, be without earth. But the earth is never going to be used up that way. You have to have goodwill that's that solid and that immense. When the Buddha gave instructions for his son to meditate, he started out by saying, make your mind like earth. People throw good things on the earth, bad things on the earth, but the earth doesn't react. That's the basis for doing your meditation. No, 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 it doesn't just stop there with non-reactivity. In the case of making your goodwill like the, the earth, you do have to keep on extending goodwill to all beings regardless. It's just that your foundation for that goodwill has to be really solid. You have to practice making your goodwill that large to the people who behave well, people who don't behave well. You still have goodwill for them. Basically means, in the light of karma, that you want them to understand the causes for true happiness and be willing and able to act on them. Now, some people that seems a very far, distant wish. But you want to make that your wish for everybody that you encounter. Now, whether they're going to get there or not anytime soon, you're not going to do anything to get in the way of their true happiness. Of course, you have to back up your goodwill with equanimity, realizing that with a lot of people this is going to take time. This is why the Buddha's instructions to the monks on the, on the Oata Padimokha begin with endurance, patience, as a basis for burning away your defilements. And as for the instructions to Rahula on making his mind like earth, he didn't stop with non-reactivity. You look at the instructions that the Buddha then gave on breath meditation, they're actually very proactive. As a build-up to doing breath meditation, he taught Rahula to, again, develop the Brahma Viharas, contemplate the unattractive nature of the body. engaged in some thinking that was actually proactive in developing skillful qualities of the mind, but also protective qualities of the mind. So when you have that kind of foundation, that kind of protection, then you do breath meditation, because the mind is more solid now. 
you can see more clearly when you're actually training yourself properly and when you're not. Because a lot of breath meditation requires that you be really observant. As John Fung once noted, the commentaries say that breath meditation is appropriate for everybody, but he said that's not the case. You have to be very observant, because you're going to be looking for subtle things. And the mind has to be very still to see those subtle things. The difference between breathing that's easeful and not easeful. that gives rise to rapture or doesn't, that calms the mind or doesn't calm the mind, steadies the mind or doesn't steady the mind. You have to be very sensitive. And the more you can make your mind solid like earth, the more you can detect these sensitive things. It's like having scientific equipment that's extremely sensitive. It's going to be useful for measuring anything. It has to be very solidly based. So we're not here just to be non-reactive. We start out training the mind to be less reactive, so it can actually see what's going on, gain some insight, and also get into concentration. You have the two of them working together, tranquility and insight, because that's when they both get strong. In fact, earth is one of the topics of concentration. As the, as the Buddha said, you're off in the wilderness and you're away from the disturbances of household life, but you still have the disturbances of being in the wilderness. There are animals in the wilderness, there are non-human beings in the wilderness, there are diseases. And you think about those things and it can be disturbing. So you put them out of your mind and just focus on the fact that everything around you is earth. Your body is earth, the things you're sitting on are earth, the trees above you. Here we are in a building, the building is earth property. As I would have said, like taking a cowhide and stretching it with a thousand pegs so it's free of wrinkles. That way you would just think of all the earthness of everything around you and not anything of the the details of the shape of that earthness. Just hold that in mind. You can develop a good, strong state of concentration that way. But then you see that even that has some disturbance in it. Then you go to space. It's wider open. Think of all the atoms in your body, all the atoms in the floor all the atoms of all the other people around you. They're mostly space, and the space in all these things connects. There's no limit to it that gets you into an even more solidly based state of mind. It's amazing paradoxical. Space has no place to land, no place to st be established, but it's a more calming state of mind more calming perception. The Buddha uses it also as an image for goodwill. He says people can try to write things on space, but the letters don't stick. The same way things that people do, things that people say, think of them as not sticking in your mind because there's nothing for them to stick to. And these are just perceptions that you're dealing with, the perception of Earth, the perception of space. But they help train the mind in the right direction, because after all, perceptions are mental fabrications. These are the things that have an impact on the state of your mind. So learn to use fabrications that are impervious to other people's activities, like the man with the, the hoe and the shovel and the basket. Even if there are many, many people with hose and shovels and baskets, the earth is still more than they can dig away. That's the kind of quality you want. Large, deep, solid. And then you alternate it with space, where nothing sticks, 
there's no surface. If you can maintain that state of mind, then as the world gets swept away, you don't get swept away with it. You may offer no shelter, but you've got shelter in your perceptions and the qualities of mind that you can develop. It has nothing of its own. But you can make these perceptions your own. You can make this solid state of mind your own. You know that the world may be a slave to craving. You can watch it be a slave to craving, but you don't have to flow along with the cravings. This is why that perception of space is so useful. Everything just flows right through. But space doesn't get pushed around. When you hold these perceptions in mind, you can st withstand a lot of things by letting them through. And that gives you a good foundation for developing more concentration, more goodwill, all the brahma more discernment. You hear some people saying that the non-reactive state of mind is the goal. That's just the beginning of the path. But it's your protection in a lot of ways. In the Buddhist discourse on protection is the Mangala Sutta. Patience, endurance is one of the protections. So develop it as much as you can. Because we live in a world where it's really needed. And by developing these perceptions, you train the mind so it's not just a fish flopping around on the land. It's the land itself, the space inside the land. That's when you can be really secure. <coughs> 